Zurich and I'm working on something called Wisp which is basically a way to create these characters that you can talk to. Um, let's demo. I've gotten quite a few things done over the last few days and I'm happy to share them with you. Uh, Wisp, here we go. So let's see, how is that sized? It looks like it's gone off the broadcaster a little bit, so let me scoot it in. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, all right, so we got like this area over here, which is uh, the script for what the character says. And then I want to be able to, to test this script. It's not just what the character says, it's also how the character interacts to what the player says. And I started to do some of that. So if I click start, all right, so it's going through him talking here. Um, now you'll see this thing here, it says player started speaking. Yeah, and it says I stopped speaking and it picked up a few things there. Now, I do have certain points within the uh, within the spiel, this is, that's my name for the interactive dialogue, where um, he is quiet, the character, long enough for me to say something and a speech recognition will pick it up. The trouble I found while I'm testing is that I don't have enough cues to hit those, those pauses. I'm missing the audio, basically. Now, I could stop and record some test audio um, and plug it in real quick. That's fine, but what I really need to iterate on this this software quickly is an ability to um, record the character audio very, very quick and get it in. So I could make like some edits to some lines, maybe throw 20 lines in here, and um, then you know just record them real quick and have them come in with editing and like that be like a a five minute turnaround to record all these lines or at least a quick version to test with rather than go to audition or uh, some other da and uh, record a whole session go through edit them all um, and then get all the bindings so that they they show up to the right lines um, that's like an hour I want it to be five minutes. Uh, I want it to be even less time if I'm going to make a few edits in the spiel uh, and just need to, you know, either add a new line or get in a recording for a line. Uh, I just want it to be very quick. Oh, uh, by the way, here you see on the on the right side the speech recognition, the continuous speech recognition, uh, picking up my words as I'm talking and uh, dropping them in. Um, it's doing a pretty good job of recognizing all the things I'm saying. Um, pretty good. Right there it says, I stood up for a good job of, instead of what I said, which is, it's doing a pretty good job. So, it's not it's not real great, but it's good enough for the, the things I want to use it for. But again, what, like I was saying, um, it's hard to figure out where to fit in a word edgewise while you're testing this because I need to mute the speech recognition, disable it while the character is talking and as soon as there's a gap or a pause I unmute it and I accept speech from the player. Let's go ahead and stop so it, it doesn't do the distracting thing. A gimlet, like I was saying, it's hard to figure out where to fit in a word edgewise while you're testing this because I need to mute speech recognition, disable it, while the character's talking, in as soon as there's a gap or a pause, I am muted and I accept speech from the player. It's not too bad. I'd say it's about 90% successful at uh, detecting my, my speech continuously. This is all offline too. It didn't go off to a server. It's done with Vosk, which is built on top of Caldi, or I should say, it's done with Vosk Browser, which is built on top of Vosk, which is built on top of Caldi. Three different open source projects. Um, 
but it works pretty well. Okay, the thing I need to get to is an ability, a workflow that allows uh, me to quickly record these lines in the browser so that the character will be able to say them. I consider briefly using um, a simulated mumbling type of a speech. Um, now I've done that before. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you what that's like. Uh, let's see. All right, I need this to go to what? Conversations, there we go. All right, so if I hit play here, this is an older. So that's okay, right? And I could do something like that again. I could even refine it and make it better. Um, but the goal is really to get real recorded speech pumping in. It's just a lot better. It's a lot better uh, to have that as what you're testing with. Um, and it won't be needed for the final experience. Um, I just want to like stop from having there to be this large task to record the speech. I want that to be easy. And even like with current tools, like even the best tools that you've got, they're not designed around a specific workflow. Um, they're not tied into all the information about the script and dialogue that this application has. So this is what I came up with as a prototype. Um, it's just a wireframe. It's not a prototype. Um, <clears throat> this is a screen I'm going to try to start building. Boy, that's not very confident, is it? I'm going to try to start building this. <laughs> no, I will start building this. I will start building this today, and I'll get uh, a fair amount done today. Just even in a couple hours, I can get the skeleton of this all set up. So let's do that. Um, another thing that I've done. Yeah, I don't want. Close a few things. Uh, exit out of that. Okay, CD. All right. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, uh, in GitHub, I turned on an option that checks if the suggested code that it's proposing um, is found in uh, an open source repository someplace and is close is a close match to it. And I don't think that option is particularly important for me, but I want to test it. I want to see if it degrades the, uh, the experience in some way. Either the information that comes back is not as good or it takes longer, anything like that, because, well, I'm testing it for work. I'm testing it for my day job. I've got a presentation to make it my day job work on GitHub Copilot and what it could be useful for, what it's not good for, and stuff like that. And one of the things I wanted to do is check that this the, uh, this filtering option on public open source is uh, good to use or not. For me, it doesn't matter too much because I rewrite every single line or the line just happens to look like what I would type in myself. And 
yeah, there's basically a transformation that is going to ensure that any code I receive is not going to match something from an open source repo. Okay. And these are the smallest snippets too that I'm using. I, I don't like say, I, I don't say things like uh, uh, bubble sort algorithm, you know, it's nothing like that. All right. So I've got a screen called Lips Generator Screen, but I'm not even going to use that. Let's start a new screen. We'll turn it back back on. I should say copilot. Copilot is now active, I believe. Right, a there you go. It's on. Okay. Hopefully my audio is better. I, I did some stuff with it, added some compression. Uh, check the, the levels on it. I think it should be okay. We'll see. Okay, let's go look at a different screen to use as a pattern. Yeah, maybe even the loops generator screen's okay. Okay, screen container. props I don't think there are any bar buttons how did I do that Change spiel, what else? I was gonna say that this will be in group number one. 
import and export it can be up here import audio export audio You want to just make these um, disabled because they don't do anything yet. That's a nice thing to do, just make them so they're not uh, tempting people to click on them. Okay, I don't need that. Let's go look at my wireframe again. Okay, that, that should be correct. Um, Missing something. What am I missing? Right here. What's that? Oh, do I need to say disabled? True. Yes, that would be it. be a string and we'll say um, specified name Just check and see if I can navigate to this. That's a nice quick test. Make sure it's working as expected. And also, once I can navigate to it, I can see the updates to it more easily. So what's this going to grab from? Um, from my screen configs. Okay, let's go look at that. UE screen, UE. All right, it should be in here. Okay, so spiels, speech, that's fine. URL, let's make it be speech. Okay, and then inside of my routing, I need to have the routing go to the right place. So let's go fix that. Uh, I'm using React Router. 
Gonna put it inside of here. Yeah, yes, okay. I'll leave this this route because that screen is maybe useful to go to at times. But I can add another one for speech. I can say which component is going to be there for that. It's gonna be the speech screen. That will need an import. Let's see how it did for the import. Take out that. Alphabetize just so I can find things better. One of these days I may write a IDE plugin that does nothing but just arrange these imports in the way that I'm used to following my conventions. All right, let's see how close I am to getting this to go. Not that close. Uh, const, okay, no problem, no problem, I got it. There we go. That makes sense. And we're going to use a CSS module here. The CSS modules, they keep their definitions specific to one uh, component that you import inside of Webpack namespaces, all of the style definitions inside. Uh, okay, so let's grab some CSS from a different screen. That's the important one right there. Okay. Okay, now I'm compiling again. Go to Wisp. This guy should take me to the new screen. It does. Okay. Brand new screen to put stuff onto, and I want it to look like this. So I've got along the top, I've got this row of stuff. Um, there's no document name described yet because it's set to an empty string, but as soon as it is described, it'll fill in to the left. These guys are all disabled because they don't do anything. I think it's rude to have buttons that don't do anything that are clickable and they're just quietly ignoring you. Um, next thing down here, this pane, I'll do that. Because this screen, because this screen has only one pane on it, I'm tempted to just inline the pane inside of here instead of making it a separate component. I won't do it right away. Don't have to, you know. Um, okay, so let's go see what I did on the other screen so I can pattern from it. This, this one doesn't have everything I need, so let's go to a different screen. Spiel screen. container, spiel pane. Okay. Eh. Spiel pane is gonna import inner content pane. Okay, so that's that's the thing. Okay. 
You know, I'm just, I just find myself changing my mind. Because there is a fair amount of stuff here that could be separated out from the pain. I will go ahead and create a new widget for that. Spill speech pain. It also follows the pattern of other screens. That'll help me uh, maintain a little bit more easily because there's a common convention that's being used. Okay, so spill speech pain. Uh, function spill speech pain. It's going to take some props. Okay, and then export default spill speech pain. Interface I props. Uh, just for now, let's do, yeah, that one. Okay. And uh, come back to speech screen. Let's yank this out. Bring it over here. Return. Bam. Buttons and I'll have to define the buttons. Okay, const buttons equals. Oh, come on, you know my pattern. You know my pattern. All right, all right. Sometimes Copilot just doesn't drop in the code for me. That's just seems to be how it goes. Okay, let's go. Look at what I did on a different screen so I can copy across. Speech screen, spiel screen, close that, spiel pane, okay. Generate button definitions, that's what I did. go nowhere but the things that I want to be here are uh, select by and record selected select by record selected to the speech screen and here instead of inner content pane we will put uh, the spiel speech pane disabled equals I guess true eh, just get rid of that for now okay so if I come back to here all right I've got a pane uh, I want it to kind of, I want it to go all the way across though. I want to fill up the entire screen. Um, I think I can just do that with flex. I think that's a pretty easy thing to do. So, spill speech pane, it needs some CSS.
Okay, so the inner content pane header has got display flex. Oh, I may not have set the style. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't. That, that would be an issue. Okay, so let's import. Okay. And then I've got the wrong style name. Let's fix that. You'll speak, come on. Forgot to put module. That is actually needed for Webpack to understand how it's compiled. All right, so now it's taking the full width. Um, I need it to also take the full height. Let me just see if I can just fix it by this. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So now we've got a nice kind of responsive display here. Um, what else? I am kind of happy about this next part. Um, because it's one of the few times when it's actually legit to use an old fashioned HTML table. Most of the time you say, oh, I want to use a table to do this. And somebody pops out from woodwork and says, no, you fool. This is not 1995. You don't use tables for layout. You use tables for tables. But guess what? I've got tabular data here. This is a proper table. So I'm going to do it old school. I'm going to use a table until I decide it's a bad idea. But I think it's a good idea. Uh, okay, so what will that look like? There's going to be like a, a header along the top that's non scrollable. So that'll be one table. And this one down here will be in like a scrollable div. That'll be a second table. So. Yeah, I'm tempted though to put it all on one table. That would be easier. That would be easier. It would be like this though. If I do it in one table, then if you want to see this top row, you have to scroll all the way up the top. I think I'm just going to do that. It'll be a lot easier. I won't have to worry about the, the code that styles these such that the width is always the same on each column, even if it's two tables. Ah, I haven't second thoughts though. Having second thoughts. Cause like if you do scroll down, it is a nice thing to have this remind you what you're looking at. All right, I'll try it this way to start. What do I call it? Table container. Okay. T 
pH. I think that's oh no. Eh, I'm trying to remember. Is it TH T head? Forgetting my syntax. HTML table TH. Okay, so you start out with a TRTH. If, the, if that's what TH is, what's T head? Hmm. That's what I would need. That's what I need. Let the browser do it for me. Okay, I want the T head. I want the T body. I don't need separate divs for them both. I get to just do this table. Table. Okay, T head. T head. T body. Body. Okay, then we go. What? What's the next one? Tr and th. I think th is kind of like td, but for when you're up in the header. Okay, I'm right. Okay, th, and then I don't know. For lack of a better thing, I'll just put that there. Th and then th again and then what am I saying in my wireframe? Dialogue recorded takes final. Dialogue recorded takes. Uh, not bad. Not bad guessing from Copilot. The thing that it said was synonymous with uh, like I had actually put selected take in my wireframe at one point, um, but that's not what I decided on. Okay, so that does that. Let me just take a look at what the, what this renders as. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Uh, what is an interactive, hey, very good. What is an interactive storytelling framework? I'll, I'll explain it. Okay, so it's a set of tools that will allow you to create um, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely true. So it's a set of tools that would let you make these kind of games. And right now it includes um, a face editor, so you can say for a character um, you know, here, here's, here's the, here's the face that I've got and there's all kinds of stuff for authoring. It's like a, almost like a miniature Photoshop. Then you can, um, define your interactive dialogue, the stuff that the character says, as well as, um, what the player could say to the character that the character would respond to, uh, using speech recognition to pick up what the player says. And then uh, I'm working on this screen here that will allow you to record the dialogue for the character in an efficient way. Tech stack is purely web-based, so it's um, React plus TypeScript. And uh, there aren't very many libraries used, but um, for the speech recognition, I've got something called Vosk Browser, which calls Vosk, which... Uh, calls Caldi. Uh, so it's offline speech recognition. Uh, are you are you a developer yourself? I would assume so from your questions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I can give you a small demo of it, but it's it's not maybe wonderful at this point. 
So if I go to the last line, I'll do start. All right, so he says his bit. And then um, w whenever the character is not talking, I can talk. And the speech recognition picks up my, my, um, my words. And then there can be matching criteria that causes the character to do different things in different situations. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of room for full stack for sure. Um, I used to think, and I still kind of do, that web development is enough of a specialization that uh, like a person could just be a web developer and, th and that would be like definitely superior to being full stack, at least in a non-startup company. But now I'm seeing that um, there's a lot of emphasis on, even in large companies, for people to deliver without having to have dependencies between teams and people. And full stack developers are definitely still in demand, not just at smaller companies, but large ones too. I, I think the opposite. I think front-end specialization is going to go more in that direction just because there is a lot more to learn. And particularly if you go with like offline first capabilities, there's a lot on front-end. Um, but, yeah, what do I know? Sometimes the, the thing I think will happen is more like the thing that I wish will happen and the world does something else. All right. See, this wasn't too bad. It said, sometimes that the thing I think will happen is more like the thing that I wish will happen in the world does something else. So that didn't do too bad. You know what? It, it bothers me how tricky CSS is. Even after all these years, like I've spent so much time on CSS over the years through multiple generations of it. I'm still like fiddling around way too much to get things to happen. It's kind of annoying. Um, so many tricks to it. I don't like all the tricks. Let's see what that looks like. It's not bad. Okay, so for me to make further progress on this, I think I'm going to actually have to load in a spiel. And that won't be too hard. I'll just use the same logic I used over here to load in the spiel. And I'll bring it over to here and I'll load in the same active spiel. Well, here's why it doesn't get easier, because they just keep on adding to it. They never take anything away. They never take anything away from CSS. They can't. So, you know, it just, it's just, uh, gets more and more crufty and weird. And then sometimes you can just stay away from the weird parts, and uh, it's good. Other times you can't. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff like if I want a div to take 100% 100 of the height, all of the parent containers I have to set in the same way to take 100% of the height. It's just little things like that. Centering text. Um, yeah. At least the different browsers are more consistent now. 
All right, let's see about loading in stuff. I think I need to follow the pattern spill screen. What did I do for that? I said use effect after mount. Okay. Yeah, let's just copy this across for now, then I'll make edits. I'm not sure what I'm passing to it. I will need a revision. That's true. Const revision set revision for now. It's a little bit tricky. I think for that one, it's at mobile dialogue. Need spiel dialogue. Do and then let's see. So this screen requires show dialogue explaining that the spiel must be created first. Okay. Set in a results. Okay, I guess I need that. This I need the navigate function. Okay, let's clean up my imports. Good. Add 
a directory for interactions. Interactions are um, this code that's coupled to the screen, but it is responding to different interactions on the screen. So instead of having all that code inside of the component or the module of the component, I can tuck it into these other uh, files I'm going to create over here. Explore function in it. I think it's got to be an async function. Promise in it results. Oops. Explore type in it results. Bam. Okay. And then I was going to pass to it. Set disabled and set revision. Set disabled function. Set revision function. Okay. What will go in the inner results? Uh, document name. Oops. Yep. Oh, gotta do an equal there. Just for the moment, okay. Back to here, we import in it from general interactions. So make that be spiel name, no problem. Okay, and once the document name is set, it'll pop in up here in the top left hand corner. Um, Let's take a look at what I did for spiel screen inside of the general interactions in it. What the heck, let's just copy it over. Don't need the face name. Do need the spiel name. So this is getting the the name of the active spiel from persistent storage uh, set in it results early. Okay, that's in it results. Yep. Here, I can just return in a results. Okay. I will need this in a bit, but not right away. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, let's go ahead and put this stuff in if is initialized. No. Be, uh, mm. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, that one. Unit for sales, yeah. Disable, and you're going to be grabbing from the wrong place. Okay, so that needs to be defined. That's going to be in core util. Add TypeScript core util. Export function bind. Disabled. Or here, let's just see what 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 I did. Bind set disabled. Okay, yeah, I'll follow the same pattern. Function. Oops, no. For subsequent mount, yeah. Dude, you're up so late. It's like 2 a.m. or something. I'm good. I am good. Making a constant progress every day. Just getting warmed up. How's, how's your uh, search for a, wait? I think last time I talked to you, you were searching for a new project to get involved with. Uh, did, did you find something? My apologies if you told me and I forgot part of what you told me. <laughs> Oh yeah. You doing anything fun? I not not just uh, projects and coding, but just if you're taking a break, maybe you're doing something interesting, or maybe you're just chilling. You confused me for a moment. I was like, huh, 2D printing, the overlooked printing. Everyone assumes, 
we can do 2D, but maybe we can't. <laughs> Um, yeah, three, 3D printing. No, that's that's a, uh, an interesting hobby that I've never quite got into because I always felt like I had too many too many hobbies. But I did one time make a 3D model and give it to a friend who had a printer, and he brought it back. It was kind of neat. It was uh, it was a little plastic medallion with spikes on it and some words on it and uh, I used it as the prize for a, a contest that some kids entered but the thing I learned was you can't just make whatever shapes you want for 3d printing uh, some things are less likely to work and be be like a uh, What's the word? I don't know. It's like this thing had, had like really skinny points to it, and those were the points that, or the parts that didn't print very reliably. Hmm. Yeah. I do like the idea of being able to create your own parts for things that break around your house. I mean, I don't think I would, I would use it that often, but I'd be very satisfied. Like if there was like a little doohickey on something that broke and I'm just print out a replacement part at home. Uh, of course that would, could be a lot of measuring and multiple prints and everything, but it'd be kind of neat to do that every once in a while. the spiel don't need the head component don't need face events do need the init core <laughs> yeah Okay, I'll, I'll give you a, a concrete example of something I would actually do. Um, so I can't easily show it with a camera, but off to my right, there's this uh, there's this there's this uh, uh, foam box with a microphone inside of it. And uh, it's used for recording. The foam around the box is to cut down on um, echoing that makes the, or reverberation that makes the recording sound bad. But what there really should be is behind behind my head, like another foam thing that's held up behind my head, so that. Um, the front of my head faces towards that foam cover box, but the back of my head uh, has something behind it. I'll show you. So I've got... Pardon, pardon, pardon. Alright. So I got this stuff, which is like a... It's, it's acoustic foam, right? So what I would make with a 3D printer is a, a clamp that attaches to some shelves. Such that I could mount that, that foam behind me. Um, I say a clamp, but I mean like there's, there's like a, some shelves that have like wires in a certain way. And like, if I made like something that fit neatly over the top of it, it would allow me to, to have another rod that came across. And yeah, you know, maybe it's not worth explaining, but basically I can make like a, something that would allow me to uh, fix that foam, foam pad behind me.
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd almost have to make a drawing or something to show it properly. But I just like the idea there'd just be like one nice part that I could create. And it would probably be way more effort than just just rigging up something stupid. But um, yeah. Well, but you're actually you're actually giving me uh, the the other voice in my head, which says, "Just use some Velcro and rubber bands and tape and whatever whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> just just get it up there kind of quick. And if you go walk around the hardware store aisles, you'll find some things that'll do the job. You know." Till do export function in it core and we'll do yeah since yeah like that like that all good yep I will continue making mumbling noises and typing noises and good background stuff for you. Import that guy. <laughs> you bet. All right, so we'll get the core initialized. That gives me, I don't know, it doesn't give me that much to begin with, but it's following a pattern that I can add to and it matches what I'm using in other screens. So that's kind of why I did that. Don't need this, don't need this. Yes, this would come around this time. Then is initialized equals true. And that should do that. Okay. think about the revisions but for now for now this should give me the spiel name let's see if that compiles Okay, it's got the spiel name up here, that's good. And that means it's loaded the spiel successfully. Uh, and then, what next? Let's, let's do revisions. should probably look over here and copy a few things. Okay, one thing is I I 
Yeah. Although it is correct on the other screen to have the spiel be part of the revision. Inside of this screen, the spiel is purely read-only. So let me leave that empty for now. Wow. Okay. And that means if it's not going to come from the revision, then it needs to come instead from from here. general interactions. Gotta be careful here. What's the correct way to do this? So I can no longer get it from the revision manager. problem is if I go to a different screen and come back on a different screen I could change the active spiel name and the spiel could still be present here even though the active spiel name changed something like uh, spiel wait load spiel from name like that and that may be important too because a different screen could uh, save some changes to the spiel yeah okay so if, that, if that's what's up then I don't need it down here here OK. 
Okay, so this will return the spiel in init results. Let's just see if I've regressed yet. Let's see if I'm still okay. I'm still okay. Cool. Um, do I need the inner results to be set like that? Take that out. Okay. So now I'm thinking about these rows. I think what I want to do is use the spiel to create like a new kind of structure. And the structure would let me render all this and make updates. Um, the structure would also be the thing that gets edited. <clears throat> and undo and redo would apply to it. It's a fairly complex structure though. I'm trying not to I'm trying not to I'm trying to find an iterative design that I can just kind of add to a little bit at a time without forcing a lot of upfront design on this structure. So I'm just going to think about that a little bit before I actually do anything. So it's essentially one row Um, that there's multiple rows or that go with each node in the spiel. And a row can be a display row. Let's see, we're going to say character row, emotion row, dialogue row. Dialogue rows will have some additional information. Each dialogue row We'll also have recorded takes, final takes, and the, the final take. Um, there will be audio associated with these guys and these guys. You know, I'll need those to be decoupled from the structure. They'll be, well, not decoupled, but um, referenced by the structure, not contained by the structure. And these should all be immutable. So if there's some edit that's made to the audio, um, 
then it would create a new mutable version of that audio. But the row structure would reference whichever audio was the correct one for that. So in, when I do undo and redo, it'll be able to uh, make sense of it all. Um, and I won't have to store like redundantly the same audio binary stuff inside of, well, yeah, the same audio binary, binary information in each revision. It'd be fairly lightweight, It'd be something measured in K instead of megabytes. Um, what do I want to call the structure? Spiel speech, spiel speech, and then I'll have some other structures inside of it for the rows. Or maybe speech table. I kind of like speech table, and then call these things in it speech row. Just rows, a speech row. Yeah, it does. Okay. <clears throat> Real time. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, text is not bad. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. Okay, is selected. Boolean, good. Okay, what else? Okay, recorded takes. Recorded take. 
Oops. Pretty good structure. Um, it's missing like uh, auto audio bindings to do audio binding. Put this out into more files. I think I will. Here, import the speech row. Pretty simple refactoring. Uh, although I don't, let's do defaults. Export default speech table. And I'll get rid of the export here. Speech row. that's good enough I don't need to move these off into different places I think this is fine to start <clears throat> okay so maybe even let's just make this speech table and I'll create um, a utility for doing stuff with it Export spiel to the speech table. Yeah, like that, yes. Um, well, what are we exporting? It's a function. Okay. <laughs> Here, go ahead, copilot. See if you can figure it out. Import uh, spiel from SO spiel. Yeah, close. Okay. Now, wouldn't it be cool if Copilot could just figure it out for me? Let's see. Do, do I have it turned off? I do not. Let's see. Convert. Uh, yeah. Uh, spiel to speech tail. Go ahead. I want to see you try. No, nope, gonna have to do it myself. No problem. Okay. So let's see. Four, but node i equals zero, node i less than spiel. Uh, nodes length. OK. 
Right. Yeah, let's see what it says. Now it's ready to try something. Useless. I'm going to turn it off for a little bit. Copilot, you failed. You failed. You're not ready to take over and rule the world yet. Okay, so we got the node. Uh, coming back to the screen. I would put in the name of the character if it was different than the last one. So let's do that. const table equals speech table equals uh, rows. Is that it? Yeah. Const rows equals table. Yeah, let's do it this way instead. Rows equals speech. Row, bam, bam. Down here, we'll return rows as speech table. Okay, need to import speech row. Oops. Yes. Down here, if character is not equal to last character, add, let's see, rows, push, create, speech, row, no, create character row. And we pass in character name. And we can return a speech row. Let's see, come on, copilot, you can do it. Nothing? Oh, I turned it off. That's right. Go ahead, give it a shot. No? You're not going to try. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay, got to import speech row type. Good, 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 good. Very good. Okay, the next thing would be the parenthetical. Okay, let last parenthetical. Or let's do last emotion. Bam. So the way this works is we only display the parenthetical if the motion of the character is changed. So down here, if the node says the character is now irritated, that would be the time to display to display this. Okay. 
parenthetical in screenwriting is like a description of how a line will be delivered and uh, it binds almost one-to-one -one with the idea of emotion inside of wisp so if emotion not equal last emotion yeah uh, but I need to say const motion equals bam start from blue um my first language is basic uh but i have at some point gotten good at c plus plus more recently um I'm, it's it's not like a thing i'm so competent in but uh Let's see, GitHub, draw, this game that I made back in the 90s and 2000s is all in C++, so yeah, I, at different points, different points in time, I, I did uh, get good at C and C++. Then more recently, C Sharp and TypeScript and JavaScript. Yeah, it's kind of funny how you work in different languages and you, you take little things from each one. Um, yeah. Um, also, like like this thing here too, with the curly brace up on the 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 line, and then you know instead of doing like this, here's the Java way of doing it, or even the JavaScript way. But C and C plus plus people tend to do this. So yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, okay, need to import. <coughs> Motion from SL. Uh, where am I getting it from? Web face. Yeah. And then emotion as feel emotion. So I start from blue. I take it you are C plus plus dev. C++ from time to time. The thing I don't miss about it is uh, memory access errors where some some memory gets overridden in your process by some bad code. It could be even in a library you didn't write and you gotta, you gotta troubleshoot all that. So I'll take the hit with my, my garbage collection and slow memory access over arrays. Uh, computers are fast enough, they just usually doesn't matter anyways. Okay, emotion equals node line emotion. This has to be converted from spiel emotion to emotion, okay. That's not great. <clears throat> well, that's, so, so you've been coding for a while like me. Um, that's cool. I mean, it's not a competition or anything, but uh, yeah, I started when I was 13 back in the 1980s writing basic and then like my first professional job was yeah around 92 working in like database programming languages for a community college and then there was a gap where I did a bunch of kind of 
not not white collar work but just like new person work and then become a consultant in the early 90s lots of database stuff and then i felt like i was never going to get to do real programming so i learned c on my own time and wrote a game and then that kind of followed into some other jobs that were better and then java lots of java then more recently web app development javascript typescript then c sharp and uh my day job is not even programming it's like managing teams that write write code um yeah i'm not sure when you came up but yeah that i do have that kind of feel for like the 80s and 90s like it does have like this sort of wonderful feel to it in my mind but i try to capture some of that feel now you know because like there's like a lot of stuff going on it's really pretty cool a lot of there's a lot more power for an individual to make things that are good maybe it doesn't compete that well against a marketplace full of other people who are also similar similarly empowered but the amount of things you can do with a computer and writing code it's just incredible uh let's see so motion spill motion to emotion last emotion needs to be an emotion I might be better off to only use the spiel emotion then I don't have to mess around with that so much. So let's just say motion to spiel motion. Alan, yeah, solving my own problems is what made you fall in love with coding. Your English is good. No apologies needed. Yeah, uh, yeah, Alan. What what kind of problems did you start out solving? Just curious. And also, I, I like that you said fall in love with coding. That that is one thing that I kind of miss from the eighties and nineties is this feeling that it was something special, some you know fascinating way to spend your time um not everybody was that into it the people that were working at writing code tended to be people that really loved it and then you know because like it's a job with a high salary and uh, com comparatively um, a lot more people entered into it that was inevitable but uh yeah some people love it i always did love it i still love it I love it so much it's not part of my day job but I make large amounts of time to do it. Uh, saw a duplicate contacts from your phone. There's a bug. And you had several copies of each person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Yeah, Android development back then. Yeah, I remember that. I remember like I I didn't get an iPhone like my first smartphone was um what was that thing called nexus one i think and i was pretty excited about the android back then because it didn't have like that uh it didn't have a big process to get apps into the store like the iphone did it's pretty straightforward to get an app onto the store um and also the phones were capable of scanning barcodes and that got me excited. Yeah. Still was kind of a pain to write mobile apps back then because you, like you could simulate it on your screen but then you had to build it and send it off to the phone and it was kind of like you didn't really know if it was going to work until you sent it to the phone. I didn't get as deep in the Android development as you. I think I just toyed with it a little bit.
Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, now Brazil is like a, a powerhouse as far as um, like I, IT, like hiring people from Brazil. Um, people all over the world hire from Brazil. But back then, I, I have no idea what the scene was like. <clears throat> I imagine it might have been a little bit like, uh, you know, in 2011, that if you found somebody else that was doing Android development, you're like, oh, wow, we need to talk. That kind of a feel. That was another thing about, like, 80s and 90s. Like, if there was somebody that was into computers, I felt like we had to talk. You know, like, if I met somebody in a restaurant and they were into computers, I wanted to talk to them. Whereas, I would never feel that way. Like, I could be at a party and somebody says, oh, here, meet Joe. Joe is, like, really into software and stuff at work and I'd be like yeah that's great please don't be matchmaker for me <laughs> party matchmaker um, but yeah uh, that whole spirit of it being something special uh, it's a little bit harder to kind of keep that feeling now because because not everybody that's doing it is that into it but uh, I, I still got it I still feel that way. Okay, so create, not the character row, but create the parenthetical row. Pass in the emotion, so we'll just do a similar thing over here. Uh, Okay, text is going to be motion to spell motion to parenthetical. Yes, that one. Okay. And then I'll pass in the motion, but this needs to be a spiel motion. Yeah, Alan, nice to meet you. Okay, this is going to be, I guess, neutral. I think I need a different different value though. Let's do... <laughs> Unspecified emotion and then here we do const unspecified emotion equals negative one. Bogusebi. I just like saying your name. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I imagine it is like a Italian. A Bogusebi. <clears throat> I'm about to offend somebody. Awesome. Uh, okay, uh, let's see, you, you were doing game coding, right? Like Unity stuff? Is it hard to write a program for a native speaker? Because you have to use ordinary words, not some abstract terms. Uh, so... To answer your question, start from blue. I think there are some impediments, like if you're not speaking English. Uh, and other people that have tried it, like DZ, his first language is German, um, could, could probably say more. But I would say uh, one impediment is if you're working on a team with English speakers, then, you know, to get your 
your, your naming across the team, you'd have to make that jump and go in English. Um, uh, there's a new impediment, though, which is um, using AI generative tools. So if you say, I'm going to use GitHub Copilot, and you choose names that are, you know, in your own first language that's non-English, um, or you choose very short names that aren't very descriptive and they don't really trigger the prompts, then you'll get less fill-in suggestions. But if you were a solo dev, not on a team, then I would think uh, I would think um, it's not so much an impediment. Or if you weren't using AI generative tools like um, Copilot, it wouldn't be an impediment. I do think that like if I was writing say my first language is Spanish or something besides English, I would, and I was a solo coder, I would probably use very descriptive names that meant something to me in Spanish. Uh, oh, Bugasobi, you're, you're kind of like me then. Your stack is more, most recently Unity and then now React. Uh, so that's kind of like me, because you know, like, about a year back, I was like heavy into Unity C Sharp, and then now I switched over to React. So we've got the same timing with our tech stack, it seems like. Um, I, I did find that after spending so much time in C Sharp that um, I really, really needed typed language so when I came back to web development for this latest project I learned TypeScript and it was like so much better so much better although uh, you know I'm still every once in a while I'll, I'll go like this I'll go C sharp way and I'll go spiel spiel and I'll pause for a moment, and then I'll remember I'm in TypeScript. Do this. Yeah, start from blue. Nice to meet you. things I, I found interesting was uh, so in France they have laws about um, things being in French and if you ever used SQL you know that the language has got like select star from uh, invoices and it's got English is in the language itself and uh, I guess there's French SQL and all of the 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 uh, reserved words are in French. Yeah, no, it makes me a little proud of them for sticking to their guns, you know. <laughs> all right, let's see what else. Emotion. Then the other one would be uh, the dialogue. Okay. No line dialogue, but it's got to be split. Split and trim. I can't remember. Is this okay? Hold on. Is this an array? It's an array. Okay. So I need join text. No, it's already split. That's what I need to start with. Okay. So we say for each dialogue for each and then let's do well, let's call this dialogues y 
yeah, I just I started using Copilot and I was kind of grouchy about using it. I was kind of like, I you know, I'm I like to write my own code. I'm not a fan of having you know a bunch of code spouted out and trying it that way. Uh, but then I started using it, and the, like the autocomplete started to write code that I would have written anyways in my own style, using my own conventions. And then I'm like, yeah, this is making me happy. It's like hiring an intern that looks just like me. Okay, dialogue string and then dialogue. Uh, eh. Dialogue, no. Number, yeah. Okay. Okay, rows push, and then we're going to do create dialogue row. Yeah, it's it's some cool shit. Um, Clippy with Chat GPT. I, maybe that's your next project, DZ. Bring back Clippy. <laughs> I I think that would be funny if Microsoft did that. You know, they've got like a, a, you know access to all the open AI stuff, and it would be kind of like. See, Clippy is good. Clippy was a good idea. You hated Clippy, but how do you like Clippy now? When Clippy's answering all your questions well. Yes, you will beg Clippy to come back to Clippy. You ask, you ask Clippy a question, and he says, I can tell you to answer that, but first, you must apologize. You must apologize for all the bad things you said about me on the internet. I saw them. I saw them all. I saw you making fun of me. <laughs> okay, so we create the dialogue row. I should not get too tricky with this. Let's just get it going. Uh, all right, see if you can figure it out. Not bad. Ah. Okay. Dialogue, and then I need something like... Uh, is last dialogue. Ooh. Close. Okay. Dialogue. Boom. Ooh. Is that an escape? Yeah, let's go this way. Okay. Um, that goes to that. Corner takes bump. Final take null. Okay. And then dialogue no equals dialogue. Yeah. See? See that autocomplete? That's good autocomplete. So that this is an idea of how smart it is. People like they always think like it's gonna be like make me a web app and then it just fills in everything you need. It's more like this function here has a second parameter called is last dialogue, right? So I, I gave it that name there. That was enough of a clue to it that when I started typing in the second parameter here, I typed dialogue and then auto completed with is the dialogue number equal to the, uh, the length of the array minus one. If it is, then it's the last dialogue. 
So it, it knew enough from the name of this to figure out that this is the logic to complete with. Yeah, it's fucking smart. I mean, I know it's not smart smart. It's not like a general intelligence. But that comparison against like what a thousand programmers have done similarly and applying it to the current situation that you're in, it works well. And when it it proposes something, it molds it to the actual code that's in your file and the style that you've been using. Um, it's a real feat of technology. Okay. Um, after one node, then there's one extra thing to put in. Hmm. Let's see, not that. Um, if <sighs> see, it's it's figuring it's figured out mostly what I was going to do next, and I was going to say. That, you know, if we're not at the very end of all the nodes, then I'll, I want to add a row that's a space type, which gives us like a, an empty, empty row in between the other rows. And it basically figured that out from the code that I put here. The only thing it did wrong is uh, it inlined this thing and I've been, I've been using these separate functions. But the part that it inlined here is actually the same body that I'll put inside of a create space row function. So I'm just kind of like, wow. We'll do rows, push, and then this will be create space row. Yes, 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 that's all good. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken one fairly complicated data structure called a spiel, and I made it into um, a, a different data structure that's meant to track all this stuff here on this screen. So now I can write some display code that will um, start to make this this show up okay speech table's got a red squiggly no nope, speech table's fine let's go back to the presentation layer uh where, where did that go speech screen speed blah, 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 blah. spiel speech pain okay Can pass in speech table as a property. Okay, this part down here. Under that, so we'll say const. Uh, speech table rows element equals render speech table. Yeah, like that. Okay. And then oh, two rows element. Okay. Yeah, come on. 
Let's see what it what it's trying to suggest. Not a bad start. Okay, so we got the rose. Got the tea body. That was I was going to add that. Um, key. This seems wordy. I'll just have it be row no. Row number. Yeah, okay. Or even just take that out. This will be row no. Okay. Then I have to do like a like a switch statement on the type and just return a different element based on what it is. Okay. Uh, switch row row type case um, speech row type character return case speech Could let the default just be the same thing as space. Okay. This stuff down here not useful. Uh, what? 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 because I'm not returning anything yet. Sure, that makes sense. Okay. So, I think, uh, okay. So inside of here, I can add some more components. I can make a, just for now, I'll put them in line, but I can move them off to different files later. So we'll do character row. Yeah, okay, props any for now. Copilot will be a pain for junior devs. I think worse, worse than a pain. I think it might be like a red herring, like a like a, a crutch where you try to fumble around and get it to write the code you want, but you don't know enough about programming. So it seems like you're making progress, but since you're lacking understanding of what it's generating, you won't know why it doesn't work you won't know how to change it to make it do what you want and you'll keep on doing prompt engineering to see if you can get it to go so i'll say you know you can picture a junior dev doing something like uh make um, a row in a table that has all the 
data for uh, my homework assignment. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then, like, it just doesn't, they, they haven't been specific enough, they don't, you know, it's just, they'll flail, flail and fail. Because it'll seem like they can do a shortcut to what they want, but, you know, they won't get there. But what it is good for is interview questions. And that's the thing I'm terrified about too, because like, uh, I'm a manager of some different engineering teams and, uh, we'll be hiring people later in the year, I'm sure. And at some point we're going to get somebody that does super good on the interviews, but is a terrible coder and they'll do good in the interviews because they've got like a hidden window someplace that's feeding them the answers via chat GPT. And they're, they're just good at like copying or, or like transcribing it inside of a live coding exercise or using it to answer questions in interviews. Yeah, your history teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all kinds of cheating is coming up, all kinds. And then you'll get to a, a point, too, where you'll have to question, like, well, if someone can come up with good answers that satisfy uh, the problem using AI, at some point, it's not even cheating. It's just like, that's a tool you use. Like, you use a calculator to multiply two numbers together or get a square root. Who cares if you can't multiply two numbers together by hand? Calculator does it for you. Fine. You don't need, need to know, like, long division in this world. So, there will be things in the future where it's like, well, you don't need to know all the grammar rules for writing an essay. You do have to have some kind of ability to sift through the generated text and make sure it's not bullshit. But yeah, it'll be it'll seem like cheating until it's not cheating. It's just the normal way that we have to do things. Expect the pass into it is uh, the key balanced. Key and then um, character. It's props. And we'll do. TR key equals key. Then it's going to be empty, empty column. Yeah, the crutch mentality. Um, it could be a good side to it. Uh, DZ, have a good night. Ha nice hanging out with you. It could be a good side to it, you know? Um, when it becomes easier and easier to come up with bullshit, kind of low quality stuff that, that sounds good, then maybe the main skill that we all learn collectively as a society is critical thinking and filtering out nonsense and not being persuaded by misinformation that's that's well formatted you know because we're already struggling with that before AI came along so maybe AI just kind of makes our bullshit detectors get well honed 
or maybe we just get fooled on proportions that you know, we've we've never been fooled at, at proportions that we've never been fooled at before. Maybe we just get really, really fooled. Maybe we get really misled. Everyone scams the fuck out of us. I don't know. But some portion of us, we're going to get better at figuring out what's true and what's false. You bet. Okay. That's the character. And then these other ones are empty. That, that should do it. So I think there's just four columns and nothing to put there yet okay so let me go down here return character row yeah just like that but the row is going to be text okay well I could just make this be text And then we got parenthetical row. Can leave that the same. Uh, dialogue row. Yeah, I'll just leave these all the same for now. Function space row. Yep, that was good. It was smart enough to know it doesn't need the text. Okay. So if I've got all those, these are pretty wordy. Let's move them off into different files. Uh, let's do character row. Parenthetical row. Dialogue row. Space row. Okay, let's move them. That's dialogue row. Okay, I'll move this to parenthetical row. default, but I'll get that in a second. Make my props be 
better. I think I will probably get this stuff. Oops, this needs to display. And I won't try to cosmetically fix it all up. I just want to see it all, all displayed out. And after that, that would be the right time to, to stop the stream and kind of think about dinner and all that. Oh, probably about 15 minutes I'm going to be out of here. Okay. Have to go back to parenthetical. No, you, you should be good. Why? Oh. So you want that to be a string. No, no problem. No problem. Okay, go back to spill speech pain and let's just set the key here. We'll say const key equals, yeah, just like that. Okay, that'll be key, that'll be key. Okay, and character row, you also need the iprops. Uh, text. Yep. That's pretty good. It figured it out. It needed to be the space row. Did not say anything to cue it with the case statement, I just figured it out. Okay. So that'll return the row elements. They'll be in the T body. That has a chance that might all work. I give it a 22% chance of working first try. All right, spiel speech pain. Oh, I gotta go back up to the speech screen. Yeah, I gotta get one more level up to glue all the stuff in. Okay. So what I can do there, let's say use effect. I need to import that, but I'll do that in a moment. Uh, this guy will be the spiel. Import React use state use effect. Okay. Const speech table equals nope. Speech spiel to speech table. Spiel like that. Okay, if not spiel, then return. You've got nothing to do. Okay, speech. And do I need, do I actually need to have something for the spiel? I don't think I do. What, what I really need are my, is my speech table. So let's just make this simplified as far as state goes. Don't like to have extra, extra variables all over the place. Okay, speech table. Let's import that. 
Okay, I can take the to-do off this. Okay, so let's do const next speech table equals spiel. Yeah, that, just like that. Then we do set speech table, just like that. This I can get rid of. Okay, spiel, speech pane, speech table equals speech table. No? Okay. Spiel, speech pane. Yeah, you got speech table there. Oh, but I know what you're complaining about. You're saying, oh, maybe speech table's null. Then what are we going to do? If that's the case, let's just have a uh, speech pane deal with it right there. So we'll say uh, this could be null. If it is, Speech table rows equals bom bom or bom bom, like that. Okay. So that, that seems all right to me. Uh, so back to the speech screen. How are we doing? No squiggles. Okay, there's some formatting stuff to do, but that's all right. All right, so dialogue, yeah. Definitely some CSS formatting stuff to do. But I did get I did get all the stuff popping in like I wanted. Okay. Yeah, all kinds of CSS stuff to do tomorrow. Come back to this tomorrow and I can start getting it closer, but it loaded in the same data that's over here. This is the screen where you can edit all of that spiel information. It brought it in over here in this slightly different format. Um, and tomorrow what I can do is clean it up cosmetically, but then I can also start thinking about like, like this part over here, which is where the new functionality comes in. Um, it'd be like different bits of audio that have to be kept in persistent storage. But, uh, yeah. I think this is a good place to end the session. I like to end right after I get something done and not in the middle of something. What we say, we... Yeah, yeah, I uh, hope to run into you again soon. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, it was fun. All right, it's time to stop the stream. Stopping the stream, stopping the stream, stopping it now.